In order to be a good academic neurosurgeon, you, you not only need to be able to take good care of patients one at a time, but you need to be interested in discovering new ways of taking care of whole classes of patients. Uh, radio surgery, for example, or deep brain stimulation. Part of that training involves research. We are exceptionally fortunate in that we have been able to hire one of the few pairs of brothers who practice neurosurgery. Brian Ho is a superstar neurosurgeon who focuses on endovascular and open cerebrovascular therapy. His younger brother, Dan, uh, is a superstar spine surgeon. Now, Brian Ho has a very busy clinical practice, but he also has a very active laboratory. He's recently received the K Award from the NIH to support mentored research into the molecular mechanisms of vascular repair. Uh, not much is known about why and how cerebral aneurysms uh, form. Uh, and the purpose of my uh, research is try to better understand and to study this uh, process. Uh, hand in hand with that uh, is uh, also my study of uh, cellular and tissue engineering therapies uh, to treat cerebral aneurysms. One of the uh, goals and objectives of my research is to try to pursue a biological therapy uh, for cerebral aneurysms, one that can uh, capture or harness uh, the power of progenitor cells, uh, wound healing, uh, by using tissue engineered therapies uh, to try to treat cerebral aneurysms. About 10,000 people a year in the United States suffer spinal cord injury, and it's usually permanent, usually has devastating uh, consequences uh, for the individual. They can lose the use commonly of both legs, and uh, not quite as commonly, all four extremities. Dan Ho is one of those investigators nationally who has focused his academic career on trying to find a new treatment for spinal cord injuries. And he's working with other investigators in the McKnight Brain Institute on a variety of methods for improving uh, the care of those patients. My basic science research is, is primarily focused at trying to get a better understanding of the pathophysiology of spinal cord injury, both in the acute and chronic setting, again, because people are living longer with spinal cord injuries, and also trying to, once we have a better understanding of the pathophysiology, developing a novel treatment strategies. And that can range from uh, cell-based and tissue-based transplant therapies to things as, as advanced as neural prostheses. We are currently uh, have an uh, active uh, uh, prospective clinical uh, uh, database in which we are uh, collecting information on, on patients that we treat both non-surgically and surgically with various spinal conditions with the idea that by uh, examining our, our, uh, the way we take care of patients, we may eventually uh, uh, develop ways that we can improve uh, patient care and improve outcomes. Steve Roper is our epilepsy surgeon and transphenoidal surgeon. Steve has had nearly continuous NIH grant funding for 12 or 13 years. He recently received a $250,000 award from the Cure Association to support his research at looking at basic electrophysiological mechanisms of epilepsy. We are now able to take very special cells. These are human neural stem cells that we acquire at the time of our surgeries for epilepsy. You can take these neural stem cells and use them to reconstitute uh, a damaged or otherwise malformed uh, area of the brain. Clearly the goal is uh, the, we can take these same human cells, a person could for instance donate their own, we could expand these neural stem cells and then transplant them back into the same person to, create, to correct a, a, a problem and of course I'm focused on epilepsy uh, and I think this is, a, this is a very promising area but it could potentially be used for a, a number of areas as well. We also have some outstanding basic science faculty in the department. Uh, Frank Bova is a PhD medical physicist and engineer. He's been my research partner for over 20 years. And Frank is a, uh, a brilliant uh, scholar of computer-assisted neurosurgery and radiosurgery. Uh, he helped to develop the patented University of Florida radiosurgery system which we first used to treat uh, uh, patients in 1988, so we're past our 20th anniversary and uh, past our 3,000th patient treated. Uh, over 250 of the University of Florida radiosurgery systems uh, are out there around the world and, and in use. As we developed that system, we actually built a research program around it. Uh, we soon realized that it was 
very a lot of similarities between linear accelerated radio surgery and regular image guided surgery. Deep brain stimulation is an area where we we naturally were able to to take our algorithms and our programs and reapply them to the to a new setting. Uh, the same thing have, is going on with uh, image guided spine surgery and other areas where we have projects of robotic surgery going on. And so it's, it's, it's been uh, kind of a progression of, of starting out a, with a focus on one area of radio surgery, realizing that it's broadly, more broadly applicable to all the various things we do, and then trying to expand uh, as the technologies have developed over the past 20 years. Brent Reynolds is a world famous uh, neural stem cell biologist. He and his mentor uh, discovered the neurosphere assay. Uh, which is used for identifying neural stem cells around the world. When we made that discovery um, in the early 1990s that the brain did have adult stem cells, that opened the door to the ability of the brain to repair itself. So what we're starting to see now is actually applications of those early findings. There are now several groups um, that are in clinical trials of activating endogenous stem cells, um, and we're working on models of stroke, um, Huntington's disease, uh, ALS, um, Parkinson's disease. The other translational work that's going on in the lab is with brain tumors. He and his team bring very exciting stem cell approaches to the diagnosis and treatment of brain tumors uh, and are now mentoring a number of our residents through their research experience.